The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. What time is it? I knew you'd come. Delete! 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 Bring Freddy Krueger's world, Elm Street. We want to see Bray Wyatt's version of the boiler room. My name is Dario Cueto. My relationship with the wrestlers is very special. And he's hanging out with Mascarita Sagrada in what looks like his basement. And then his mom shows up with bagel bites. It's glorious. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome! We are scientifically proven to be the best tag team, and not just in NXT, not just in the WWE, but in the entire universe. I've said this before, Dosh, I've said it a million times. Winners find a way to win. I'm going to explore the Elimination Chamber. I'm going to go and over every match I've ever, I've ever seen in the Elimination Chamber. I'm going to go over it. I'm going to dissect it, and I'm going to win. I'm going to win my WWE championship back. Ladies and gentlemen, wrestling to the max. And your host, Gary Vaughn, Sean Garmer, and Paul Leeser. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestling to the Max, episode 233, part 2. And boy, do we have a barn burner here for you today because we have some great content that you're going to be excited about. Trust me, we are going to talk Elimination Chamber. That's right, it's happening this weekend. And you're not going to want to miss our preview because we're going to go down and talk about all the matches, kind of give our predictions and some of our thoughts on what could be going on in that show, as well as we'll also be predicting and previewing the new beginning Osaka show and that is of course the 2017 version uh so trust me you're not going to want to miss that as well along with some great great quick hits we're going to be talking about some big tna news of course some of the people in creative who's official uh we're also going to be talking about some other partnerships that tna has gotten into along with wb talk when it comes to maybe some stuff going down and their network and how they're doing when it comes to their network subscribers Along with uh, you know a former women's champion who actually has uh, some stuff going on with her, and as well as maybe even a movie about her. So we'll be talking about that, along with other great news that you're not going to want to miss us talking about, as well as we are going to talk TNA Impact Wrestling, and of course crowning a superstar of the week. So we've got a packed one, guys. Everything I just ran through, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. So I am not going to delay too much. Uh, but I do want to throw something out there. Uh, I'm, of course, I'm your host, Gary Vaughn. Of course, with me is Mr. Sean Garmer. What's up, everybody? Sorry, I had to make sure I wasn't on mute. Yeah, <laughs> that had been bad. Everybody's just like, who? Oh, is he talking to a ghost? Uh, and, of course, Paul Leeser. hey yo. Oh, man, guys. Okay, so really quickly, I just want to throw this out there. You know, I always ask how we're doing. You guys can talk about something if you want, you know, anything you're doing. But I, I'm just going to mention this really quickly. I checked out 24 Legacy. I was a huge fan of 24. Of course, if anybody does not know that, it's a TV show that Fox has presented, and uh, they got a new version of it out. And I was actually happy with it. I know I've been co- talking with you guys off there, I think even on there, about my fear. I actually kind of liked it. I can't lie. So, got that going on you know some other great shows i just watched legion and actually i i i'm really kind of interested in that show it was kind of weird first episode so there's some great tv content coming our way i'm kind of trying to do a little bit better job of watching some of that stuff i've kind of been on the back burner so i don't know that's what's going on with me what's going on with you guys what's going on with you paul oh it's good to hear that legion is is a good uh, or at least an interesting show it's one i've been meaning to check out that uh, i still need to do so um, I mean, as far as TV goes, I'm trying to scale back a little bit because my New Year's resolution was to read more books this year, which I finished one today. So I'm doing okay so far. Oh, man. See, we got a smart one on our hands. I, 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 man, 
Reading is not my thing. I, th- I I just I find myself thinking about other things as I read, and I have to reread and then reread. <laughs> my I guess it's something going on with me. Oh man! So yeah, so I, I we get don't it. have Lavar Burton to come in here and I know right read to us. <laughs> <laughs> I'd mark out so hard, guys. <laughs> We'd be lovely. Read, I watched Reading Rainbow all the time when I was a kid. Oh, man. I yeah. love that theme song, too. That was one of my favorite oh, themes. Oh, that was so great. Back when shows actually had theme songs. It's in a book. Just take a look. Okay, anyway. Sean, uh, you doing anything? I mean, have you been watching any new shows or anything Singing like that? There's so much to it. <laughs> yeah, well, trust me, you don't want to get me into that because I would. We probably lost no. everybody right there. No, yeah, I'm so, uh, that's I'm trying to move us on. Any new good no, content? Uh, I, uh, yeah, I I watched that uh, that timeless show, which I enjoy for all the history stuff and, and whatever. Um, I actually am doing the opposite of Paul. I probably watch too much TV now. I got to a point where I wasn't watching any really, and then like now it's. Probably every day of the week I have something that I watch. So I don't watch it like right after. It's whenever I remember that there were shows on. And I'm like, oh, let me, I'm editing something. My TV's right next to me. Why not just start watching stuff? But enjoying mm-hmm. Sleepy Hollow being back. And uh, Lucifer has been pretty good. And so there's uh, there's good stuff out there. I, I still need to check out Legion too. but uh, And I have that Taboo show recorded. And I keep forgetting to start watching it. But. Yeah, Santa Clarita so Diet over on Netflix too is really good, by the way. See, I need to watch that. Oh my god, I it's love right zombies. Right up your alley, man. It's zombies and it's like a cheesy throwback sitcom. Almost, it's great. It's so great. See, uh-huh. you, you know me too well. Yeah, I'm going to be checking <laughs> it. I, I, I got to check it out. I, it's, it's just because of everything else been going on. And then, honestly, I've been waiting for my wife to watch this show because you know. She'll sometimes watch it. She watched Dexter with me and a few other things. And I want to give her a chance to watch things together. But I think I'm going to have to just jump into it. I, I, I did with Legion. I'll probably do it with that, too. So, um, But that's that's maybe some of the suggestions out there, people, from us. You know, some TV shows that we've been kind of checking out. Maybe you want to go check out yourself. That's just some of you know what's going on with us right now. So trust me, we're doing a lot more if things. If we had an entertainment TV. podcast, we'd be there for a while. Yeah. A, a long, <laughs> long Wow. So, uh, but this is a wrestling podcast, so we're talking wrestling tonight, and I'm very, very excited. We got Elimination Chamber to jump into, and so that's the first thing we are going to do tonight, and give you guys an idea of what's going on in Elimination Chamber and some of our predictions. So, why don't we go ahead and start it out now, and let's go ahead and talk about one of the big matches on this card, and that is Luke Harper facing off against Randy Orton in a singles match, and this one is kind of interesting because you know these guys have been going back and forth and you know of course Bray Wyatt's going to be around trust me I'm sure he'll be possibly even maybe making uh, some things happen you never know what what do you think is going to happen here Paul uh, I'm expecting a really good match I think very highly of Luke Harper and all of his work uh, Randy has been great since the uh, the whole aligning with the family and everything and I, I mean I, you're not going to have Randy Orton and his bid to challenge at WrestleMania lose here. So, unfortunately, I think Luke Harper's going to take the loss. Unless they decide to get cute with this and maybe go a DQ route to keep Harper strong-ish coming out of this. I don't know. But uh, I, I certainly do expect Randy Orton to win. Sean? Yeah, uh, I think this is pretty much set up for Randy Orton to win here. I mean, you're not going to have him lose right before he's going to... The last pay per for... He's going on to WrestleMania, I don't think. I mean, they'll keep uh, doing this. I wonder if, you know, Bray Wyatt's going to get involved or, you know, at all in this or, or anything. That should be interesting because you know the other two guys are probably going to get involved in the match that's going to main event the show. I would hope this is good. You know, Luke Harper and Randy Orton can both put on, you know, good matches, you know, when Orton's in the mood. Uh, so hopefully this is a. Uh, a good one, and yeah, or teams like Orton's locked to win this thing. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I think Randy Orton wins this, and I think Luke Harper will do a lot of uh, good things for himself. You know, I'm sure he'll have a pretty awesome match, but I think really when we're looking at this, Randy Orton, it, it would just not make any sense for him to lose this one. So uh, let's move on to the next match. Apollo Crews and Kalisto will be facing off against Dolph Ziggler in a handicap match. 
What do you think about this one? Oh, man. You know, I I would... I think I picked Apollo and Kalisto to win this by disqualification because I think what's going to happen is they're, they're going to start getting the most of Dolph. Dolph's going to sort of snap, and he's already said many times on SmackDown, it's not really about win or lose anymore for him. It's more about proving the point. And I think the point is that he can beat these guys up whenever he wants, and so chair and, and all that fun stuff comes into play in this and puts on the beatdown and gets the DQ. Uh, yeah, I think this is only, I don't think you can have Dolph lose like this already. Uh, I think just keep having Dolph doing what he's doing, being a dick, and yeah, he's going to keep, uh, he's going to get something involved, or he's he's going to go get a chair and hit him, or whatever, like he's been doing. Yeah, uh, Paulo and Kalisa win by DQ. Uh, you guys make you know a good point here. I want to switch it though around here. Uh, you guys are making the point that you know Dolph Ziggler being you know the heel here, he, he's going to do something dastardly and just to make sure he makes a point. I'm going to throw out the idea of maybe Apollo or Kalisto freak out and go that route and get disqualified. I, I don't know. Maybe I say Kalisto because Kalisto's really been in no man's land. Not that Apollo hasn't been on every milk carton in the U.S., but I think that really at this point, I'm kind of looking at those guys and really the fact that maybe something different with them could do them a lot of favors. And maybe, you know, Kalisto going nuts. See, I, we kind of, I kind of think we kind of saw hints at that with Kalisto and Baron Corbin where Kalisto kind of had those freak-out moments. So I'll say Kalisto freaks out and gets frustrated because they're not beating Ziggler as easily as they felt they would, and he starts hitting Ziggler with a chair. That's the way I'll go. So, uh, But it, I, I think you guys may be correct on that. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the women's matches on this card because they are both very, very interesting. Uh, let's talk about Becky Lynch facing off against Mickey James. How do you guys feel about this one? Oh, man, I'm really excited for this one. I, I think these two are going to put on a great match. Maybe um, sort of the sleeper behind the Elimination Chamber as far as matches of the evening go. And uh, I don't know. Cause this one, you could really go either way. Because if Mickey wins, then obviously she has something to the point that she's trying to make. And if Becky wins, then you can sort of rebuild her back up to challenge for the title again if you want to go that route. I am struggling to remember who I picked for the predictions. I think I picked Becky uh, just because I, I struggled to pick against Becky. But So I'm going to go with Becky. Take that. Yeah, I wonder what the SmackDown Women's title situation is going to be interesting because you already have a multi-women match that's probably going to be set up on Raw. Would they do another multi-women match for SmackDown or would they just do a one-on-one or... Would they do some kind of just everybody being involved thing? You know, so, uh, you know, with Nikki not being there, you're going to have an odd number. So, or, well, uh, I don't know. I can't think right now. But, uh, yeah, I, I think Mickey James kind of needs to win here to solidify what she's talking about. I think if you have Becky win first off, even if that means you get Alexa involved or something, uh, to kind of ha- protect Becky a little bit, you need Mickey to win so that she's not just blabbing on, that she has a point and she can continue making that point uh, as the weeks go on heading to WrestleMania instead of just, oh, uh, well, she talked a big game and then she lost. Here's my thing, and I'm fighting myself on this, and I kind of feel like you've got two matches here because I think they do intertwine because, like you're talking about, Sean, you know, depending on where they take this and how they're going to handle all these women on SmackDown versus what they're doing over there on Raw. I, I look at this, and really, Mickey James is so new to this young group of people who are now watching SmackDown Live, people who don't remember when she actually was on the roster years ago, didn't see her in TNA or anything else that she did. And I, I kind of feel that you're right on that. I think Mickey James needs a win. She needs to show that she can do it. And if, especially if people watch NXT, they saw a great match between, you know, Oscar and Mickey James, but Mickey James lost. 
but that's no big deal. That was a different thing. SmackDown Live, though, I, I feel like she's a new person. She's a, even though she is a heel, I still feel like she kind of needs that win. But Becky Lynch kind of needs some victories too. She's not exactly you know on par uh, when it comes to victories. I, I'm going to go Mickey James just because of the fact I think she needs it. Now I that's that's my heart. My brain tells me that. Becky could win, but I'm, I'm going to go Mickey James. And, and the reason I'm also fighting myself is because of this next match, and that's Alexa Bliss as the champion facing off against Naomi. And I just don't see any way possible that Naomi wins. Now, it could happen, but I just I don't think it makes any sense for me. And for them to give Naomi that championship, I think it's kind of a stretch at this point. I, I don't think that she's got enough people backing her and when, when it comes to fan support or Heck, even people behind the scenes. I think Alexa Bliss has to win this match. And I think it's going to be kind of weird for me to say that both Mickey James and Alexa win in the same night. It's kind of odd. I'm going to go with it, though. That's me. I'm picking Alexa Bliss to keep her championship. How do you guys feel? Uh, I, too, have Alexa retaining the championship against Naomi. I, I just don't see a reason to move the championship off of Alexa whenever she's using it so well and she's become such an interesting character and she has all these great things going behind her and I think to sort of cut the legs out from under it this soon uh, and give it to Naomi, no if it's Naomi who I think is a great wrestler but man uh, I, I just, I'm so on the Alexa Bliss train right now I think that's why Becky wins too it's, I don't think they're going to have both sides of the same coin winning these two matches so I think you go one and one split the difference and move on from there Yeah, I, I'm going to go with uh, Alexa retaining here. Paul kind of said everything. It, it doesn't make any sense to take it off her right now. Uh, you know, Naomi's, it's one of those weird things with her where can you trust her? She's been injured quite a bit. And I think they want to kind of let her get back into the flow of things before you do any of that. It would, you know, I think SmackDown, both the women have a chance to, crown new champions and if that's going to happen to be at Wrestlemania I wouldn't see it happening here yeah yeah you're exactly right and you know uh, to, to Paul's point I mean I, I think that you know logic tells us that you know you're going to have a face win and a heel win out of these two matches right uh, my one thing I will say about that is is if it goes mine and Sean's way of Alexa Bliss and of course Mickey James winning that's a lot of bragging rights. That's a lot of them both being boisterous, vocal, just being more of that because, you know, both of them are pretty good at that. And I think that brings even more heat to this. And I think it also kind of propels these baby face women into a motion of, hey, we've got to step up our game. We've got to be better. And I think I like that because they're chasing you know, they're not only just chasing the title, but they're also chasing, hey, we're going to beat Mickey James. She's just as much as a threat as Alexa Bliss. So I kind of like that thought process, even though, I don't know, logic doesn't really say it. So that's just me, though. I mean, there's a lot to that, and it's really, really, really interesting. So uh, let's go ahead and move on from here, though, because we have some other great matches on this card. Uh, we have this big tag team turmoil match thing it's you know it, it's crazy the way that they're kind of doing this whole thing um so i mean there's a lot of teams here uh that we're gonna have to talk about so uh you know let's go ahead and do it let's talk about of course you know you got american alpha the team that you know, of course is a champion coming in into this thing and you know they're gonna have to defend their title against other teams like of course we have the uh Heath slater and rhino who have been former champions uh, brazongo Along with, we have, uh, of course, you know, the uh, Usos, who, man, they're former champions, too. That's a big team. You know, Jimmy and Jay are not far from it. The Ascension, we got to look at them, along with the VOD villains. So, I mean, there's a bunch of teams in here that we've got to kind of look at and say that, you know, there's some uh, some big competition. So, what do you guys think about this? What do you think about this match, and who do you think come out of this victors? They really need another team to come out of this looking good. I don't think they moved the belt, so I think American Alpha retains. But some other team out of this needs to look like a credible threat to maybe beating American Alpha in a straight-up two-on-two or something like that moving forward. 
And whether it's the Ascension or they go with Slider and Radio again or whoever they choose, Usos, whatever. It doesn't matter. So long as somebody else out of this looks strong. But American Alpha retains here. I don't see a reason to move the belts off of them at all. It's going to be American Alpha. This is meant to make them look good, to, to show that they don't have challengers. And I think they do another open challenge at WrestleMania or something like that. And then you have, uh, you know, their old friends, the Revival, come out or something like that. I I just don't see the reason why you take it off of them. You have them not defend them for a month and you have this match. And just to have them lose, that's kind of silly. I do think Paul's right. In the meantime, you kind of do need to have some title defenses for them. So whether it is any of these teams, I don't think you know the Vaude villains are pretty. Vaude villains and and uh, Febreze are pretty much they're the fodder of this whole thing. Um, the Ascension getting a big win on SmackDown is interesting. I wonder if they're going to try to build them back up. I don't. You've, they've already had their thing with the Usos. I guess they could keep doing that, but you know how far are you going to be able to go with it? And, you know, the the other team that I'm... Slater and Rhino are faces. Are they going to break them up? Are they not? What's going on? You know. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say... The American Alpha with, uh, I guess, the Ascension would wind up being the last... I guess they would have to be unpinned. I don't know how this works, but whatever. It's, American Alpha wins. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Uh, there's too many tag teams to sit here and really evaluate everything because I mean there's so many variations that this match could have. But at the end of the day, uh, I think you guys are right. American Alpha, they're the team to beat, and I don't think that anyone will accomplish that goal of beating them. So uh, they'll continue on with their greatness, and of course you'll hopefully, as Sean said, could be the case. I'd love to see the Revival or someone else new take on them. But, of course, you know, that's the way this thing has to work out. This Right now, this is not my favorite part of SmackDown Live. Uh, this tag team situation is getting close to a snore fest for me just because of the fact that it is it is a big blurb of guys. If it was, you know, more just tag team on tag team, I think I'd be more interested. But right now, I'm just kind of like, ugh, just too much. Um, so... There you go. We all pick American Alpha on that one. Uh, let's talk about a feud that has been boiling over. And this was one that kind of teeter totters on, uh, you know, actual TV show, Total Divas, I guess you'd say, uh, because of the fact that you got two people that have been a big part of that show. And that is, of course, Nikki Bella and Natalia. And the way that they've been slinging dirt back and forth on SmackDown Live, it, it's almost like watching TMZ or something. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have this big match. How do you guys feel like this is going to fare? Uh, I, this is another one for, for Nikki to win, right? And the build up to what I'm still assuming is going to be her winning the title at some point, depending on how true those retirement rumors are or not. But, uh, I mean, this seems like it was all built up just to let her get the big win here and. I kind of hope this gets made in a no DQ match too. I know we talked about this on the last episode or on the SmackDown review, I think. But uh, Nikki, Nikki and Natty deserves, and, and I think that with three women's matches on the on the card, maybe they want to vary it up some. Uh, so at least letting this be no DQ might help you do that some. Yeah, I, I definitely, you know, Paul and I talked about this. This really needs to be as much as these women have been hitting each other. And knocking each other into the, the truck and the set for the talking smack and all this other... I mean, you gotta be... You no, know, you have the the brawl outside the, uh, the you know, in, in the uh, backstage area. I mean, all the kind of things that you say, okay, this has got to be no DQ, there's got to be some kind of stipulation. They got to be adding something, right? There's gonna be something on the pre-show... Whatever it is that they add, they add some kind of stipulation on this because it doesn't feel like it needs to just be a grappling match going on here. Um, yeah, Nikki winning makes total sense, whether it is the the rumored tag team match with Cena or whatever it is. Yeah, it makes sense for her to win here, vanquish Natalia, and put it behind her finally. 
there are different stipulations they could add to this to, to make it interesting, and I, I think it, you know, like you guys said, it may be needed, and they'll probably announce that in the pre-show. I think a cat scramble would be great. You know what? You know a cat scramble. Natalia is part of this match. Maybe she throws out the idea of whoever catches the most cats gets John Cena. What? I'm just throwing it out there. Hopefully, what? it's it's. <laughs> Oh boy! A cat scramble. Come on, guys! You, you never you stood in a room where they let thirty cats go, and you have to catch them. You guys no. have never done that before. I can't really? say I've ever found myself in that situation before, Gary. Gary, oh. are you tra- what are you trying to say? Uh, never mind. Let's talk about the fact <laughs> that I'm going to vote. Gary, in- <laughs> Gary used to be the old old cat man. Now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, the good old days. Uh, Natalia, I'll I'll take Natalia. It makes well, I no mean, sense. they could no just much. have you know Tupac sitting there giving uh, on, on her Instagram. She could be giving uh, a rating, constant, you know, for the match or something. Yeah, I'm just sorry. I could just see Natalia throwing cats at Nikki. I just I could see it happening. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm, I'm just gonna say, you know what? It's probably when, wrong. I'm gonna tell you. Like PETA come in and say. You're I feel like animal guys. cruelty would indeed be yeah, called. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Vince has beat the government before. He can do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's talk about John Cena <laughs> and this Elimination Chamber match. John Cena is going to be defending his title against, of course, the likes of AJ Styles, another former champion, along with, guess who? Dean Ambrose, along with The Miz, Baron Corbin. Bray Wyatt. I mean, this is going to be a fun match to watch. I'm excited about seeing who is going to come out on top. Of course, we've seen all the speculation on the rumors and the dirt sheets, but how do you guys feel like it's going to fare? Uh, I mean, I think uh, the way that the news and everything like that on the, the old internet and the dirt sheets has been correct as far as what's going to happen here. I think Bray wins. I think Baron gets a couple eliminations, maybe even eliminates Dean, and you can set up an IC title program that way. Uh, I think Cena and AJ beat the Jesus out of each other, and AJ gets taken out that way, and then Cena ends up taking the the fall to Bray in a nice little, I, I don't want to say payback, but a nice little reminder that, hey, these guys had beef once, and, and this time Bray came out on top, finally. Uh, yeah, I think uh, this makes too much sense not to have Bray win the title here. You got Randy Orton going... To WrestleMania, as much as, you know, having another Cena-Orton match, maybe would sell some tickets or, or just get people to kind of open their eyes, you know, the casuals anyway. You've been telling this great story with Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, Luke Harper, the whole family. you got to continue that on the WrestleMania. And the way that you do it without it seeming hokey is Bray Wyatt wins the title. And so now Randy Orton has to face Bray Wyatt, whether he wants to or not, because he won the Royal Rumble, unless, you know, he's going to put that on the line or whatever, you know, who knows. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Cena seems to be destined for other things. AJ also seems to be destined for other things. The uh, Dean is already Intercontinental Champion, and... I forgot who else is in this. Baron Corbin, no way. Nowhere near uh, ready for that kind of uh, pressure and, and for that kind of ha- having any of that right now. So the only guy that really makes sense here is, is Bright White. And hopefully it's not a one in, you know one month and done thing for him because he totally... Uh, deserves some kind of run with it. I mean, the dude's been working hard. Just it sucks that he's never really gotten title gold at this point. It's just not the way this story ends, though. I mean, he's the definition of it. A doesn't have to champion. end at WrestleMania, though. I uh, I don't think they're gonna let Randy not walk away from WrestleMania without that championship. We'll see. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know. This is really difficult because of those reasons. And I, I do like the Bray Wyatt matchup with Randy Orton best of all the competitors. You guys just said you guys just kind of spoke some of the reasons why it would work better in that format. If Baron Corbin had been on the roster a lot longer, if he had 
he had grown a little bit more than he's grown now, I think that we'd be looking at him as maybe a favorite only because they seem to be kind of on that train. They kind of like him, but like you know, Sean said, just ah, there's no way he's ready for that right now. And Ambrose has been there, done that. I mean, if you're not talking about John Cena or AJ Styles, I think that really you have to say Bray Wyatt. And I just don't think they're looking for AJ to face Orton in this WrestleMania. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my hat in that mix with Bray Wyatt being the guy that comes out of the Elimination Chamber. How long will he have the title? Will he make it to Mania and pass Mania with it? Who knows? But right now, as it sits, I'm just going to go ahead and throw his prediction out for this week, and that means Bray Wyatt will be the champion. At least I'm, I'm kind of hoping, to be honest with you, I love Bray Wyatt, and I want him to do well. So, uh, But, yeah, that will conclude the Elimination Chamber. Of course, lots of great you know stuff coming out of that. It's very, very interesting you know, to kind of see the way things can work out towards WrestleMania, at least with the SmackDown brand. So. Uh, but yeah, now it's time to move over and talk some quick hits, guys. So let's get into some wrestling news right after this. Why is this not showing up in the thing? There you go. It's time for wrestling news. Quick hits. All right. All right. Let's do this thing. Let's go ahead and start and talk a little TNA news because they've got a lot of things mixing around here. And, uh, of course, what's been interesting is, of course, we kind of broke this really late on last week's episode, uh, part, uh, or actually this week's part one, excuse me. I don't, I don't want to already think it's a week. Uh, this was just Monday night. We kind of announced that Noah had joined forces with TNA. They don't have all the details with that, but they have confirmed that they are going to work together. And that means, of course, they'll be sharing some of their talent. Now, we do know that Moose has, of course, revealed that he is going to be one of those people, you know, working alongside with uh, Noah. And this will be very interesting to see, you know, some of these guys. Eddie Edwards has also been another guy that has been thought to be heading over to Noah. So this is really Kind of, you know, cool to kind of get the, you know, uh, thought process going, process going that some of these TNA guys won't just be a part of TNA. They'll be working in some other promotion. Overall, how do you feel about this, though? Uh, I mean, Moose makes sense as one of the first guys to go over. He's had experience in Japan with the, the ROH New Japan relationship. Uh, I mean, they're going to be back in Kurokin, I think, for this March 12th show. So, I mean, there, there's good stuff to be had with Moose there. I, I know the big banner here is, is Lashley, and, and a lot of the groups that I'm in that talk about uh, Puro, uh, Lashley Nakajima seems to be the one most people want. And it's hard not to want that, obviously. Lashley and anybody from Noah, I think, would be gold. But I, I think uh, what's holding true still is what me and Sean have been saying since the announcement happened on t- Monday night, Tuesday morning. This do- I don't... This helps Noah a whole lot. I don't think it helps TNA all that much. Yeah, I'm going to echo that same sentiment here. It depends on what TNA is going to do, right? Is TNA going to start marketing these one-night onlys as pay-per-views that you really need to watch? Just not name them? Or are they still going to be what they are, which is basically shows that they have to do for international uh reasons and that's all they are uh because they really were hyping up that one that first one night only when they came back after all the changes and everything with anthem so it's interesting to see what they're going to do with that because that obviously i think is what makes this whole thing more important now obviously you could have big noah and tna matches for a single anniversary or for a bound for glory but in the meantime, if that's the only time you're going to see them, people aren't really going to care outside of the bubble. And that's really not the people that are watching TNA. We've learned after many years that TNA has their own set of fans, and they tend to be kind of very we-only-watch-TNA fans. So, you know, I don't know how much that's going to play for their TV ratings that you're really trying everything you possibly can to get up 
Yeah, and that's what's going to be kind of interesting because of that, you know, just those reasons. And, you know, you also got to throw in that TNA is not just working with Noah now. They're apparently going to be working with Conan's promotion, The Crash. So that's another promotion that's going to be added into this mix somewhere. And really, once again, I mean, it seems like TNA would be a bigger help than really they'll be getting help from these promotions. So, I mean, this is cool in a way because they're not just staying to themselves but on the other hand how much is tna really going to gain from this and, and like you guys said i question it i question it uh, majorly well paul i mean give me your thought process about the crash i'm not really familiar with what's going on here it, it, are, could they be an asset uh so the, the crash is uh is what conan has done since he's left triple a and and all that good stuff and his promotion has a lot of big guys in it it's it's got um it's it's also got a lot of the uh the paris de mall guys are there now which includes pentagon jr if you guys are into him uh so there you could get into some sticky situation with with guys tna may want on their tv pro- uh product but can't have obviously because of the lucha underground deals or whatever else is happening over there so i um i'm not overly familiar with the crash either because they're they're smaller time and uh uh, they don't have near the exposure that AAA or CMLL does, but this is the the crash is also the promotion where uh, Paraguayo died in the accident with Rey Mysterio. So, oh, yeah. I mean, it's I mean it's something that you know I don't know much about. Either. They don't really get a lot of coverage outside of the you know the lucha blogs and that kind of thing, and uh, it's already hard enough to keep up with all the other wrestling we watch to be paying attention to what's happening there i i think it's cool that jared's wanting to work with all these different companies what he wanted to do with gfw and it looks like he's sort of branching that into tna to get them the various different kinds of talent and that's not bad i want to reiterate what i said it's like you know i'm not trying to say that tna is doing something silly by bringing in the noah people it's not it, they they need to have different kinds of talent they need to be more global i guess to say and you know it, it does let those tna fans know who these people are and perhaps they go follow them when they go into noah and perhaps they go follow the tna talent when the tna talent goes to noah you know um so it i mean it's probably gonna be a small number but Having those TNA guys go to Noah might do Noah more, uh, or help Noah more than, I mean, you know, Japan, it is what it is with the Gaijins, but you get certain guys over there, they might really uh, hit it off, and and you never know, but, uh, I mean, this is good for TNA overall, I think, Mm -hmm. in that they're getting different people in there, and you never know who they could get to stick around or, you know, you never know with contracts, whose contracts are coming up and say TNA offers them more and they stay with them. Right. But I just don't, uh, in the long run, it's just, it's the type of fan base that you have. Are they going to want to embrace those people and really take the time to get to know them outside of what they're doing in TNA to, for it really to mean something, you know? Uh, very true and i also look at this as being something where if you can take anything out of this for at least tna when it comes to using these other promotions we know let's say that someone follows noah but they don't watch tna they'll get an opportunity to see some of tna's talent and they'll also hopefully if tna smart have you know a way for them to announce that tna is available to purchase you know on an app you know, so people can go check them out and people can find them and um, that will help them hopefully financially through that way and maybe get more eyes on their product when people may get not go out of their way to go do that. You know, so I look at that as possibly being a good thing. Are they going to do that? I have no idea if they're going to be going to promote the app or anything that they're doing, but I think that's the best way of doing it, especially when maybe you want some of the Japanese fans of Noah to come check your product out. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, TNA, you know, Sean just mentioned a big name and that's Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett, of course, is a head of creative 
in TNA now. Of course, working with him is Scott Demore, along with Dutch Mantel. And this is kind of getting back to the old days a little bit here uh, of what TNA used to be when it comes to creative. I mean, these guys, I mean, I know have a lot of ideas, but we're going to see a lot of changes coming up here, uh, I think, for TNA and, and the way they're doing things. What direction do you feel like they're going to be going in here, Paul? Because, I mean, these are some great names. These are guys that have done some smart things, but they're also not exactly, you know, guys that have been overly successful to the point of, you know, they're consistent. I mean, that creative team that you're talking about right there is a lot of the big head honchos from the uh, the glory days, I guess, of TNA from like 2004 to maybe 2007 or so. Uh, Scott Demore and Jeff Jarrett both were a big part of that. And you have, you know, a bunch of intermixed names in there. Dusty, of course, was there at the time. Uh, some other names. I, I mean, the talent seem high on all the changes. Uh, I mean, Jarrett is pretty much in charge of TNA again. Uh, talk about a roundabout way to get back to where you were, but it's, I mean, the talent's interested. I, I can't say the first set of tapings that we've seen so far have felt like TNA is any different, but hopefully there's more to come as we get further away from what they were left with and more towards what they want to do. Yeah, uh, I think definitely you got to do what you got to do right now for your TNA, if you're Impact or whatever the hell they I guess they're still called TNA in some capacity but uh yeah I mean if or try to relive these glory days try to do what you can with this creative team if it doesn't work then I don't know what to tell you for TNA because right now they just don't feel like they have any direction uh other than maybe the main event scene and hopefully Jeff Jarrett and Scott Demore and all these smart guys uh, smart wrestling people We'll be able to get in there and say, okay, what do we need to do here? And uh, start giving their talent direction and start making things feel like they matter in TNA. Because that's the thing. A lot of what you see on TNA, it just feels like this show happens and none of it really means anything. Yeah, and that's the, not a good thing at all. Uh, it's kind of what sucks at times and I, I hope that definitely changes and hopefully this new group does just that and kind of makes it where every week we want to get excited about what's coming next and, and just you know be ready and I, and I think also these guys are going to have a lot of you know thought processes on what talent is signed what's not signed and you know who they want and man it seems more and more we're seeing different talents now switching going different places, going to New Japan, leaving New Japan, you know, Ring of Honor is even losing people, you know. So I'm really kind of curious how this TNA thing is going to all work out in the end, especially with Amped revamping, changing some major things here to kind of, you know, see if the product can continue on. Talking about Ring of Honor really quickly, I just mentioned them and losing talent. You know, we all, you know, have recently talked about Donovan Dijak leaving and, you know, he's supposed to be finishing up with the Ring of Honor pretty soon here uh, with the Steel City Excellence uh, weekend. And then he'll possibly be just, you know, moving on to some other bigger things. But um, I, I still, Paul, I mean, still, this is kind of a, a thing to me. I mean, losing talents like Dijak to me is a little bit worrisome with the Ring of Honor because he's definitely been a great part of it. Maybe not, you know, a guy that's been in the title picture, but he's been a huge, you know, part of that roster for a while. Somebody who they seemed really high on at one point to push towards that direction. And just uh, either they got gun shy about it or nothing ever came of it or they wanted to play it out some more. But it seems like Dijak is much more bound for the Flow Slam family of promotions. Uh, he's been announced for Evolve WrestleMania weekend. He continues to work for Beyond, who has their deal with Flow Slam as well. And... Um, I, I think it was just recently announced that he's going to be in the West Side Extreme Wrestling 16 karat gold tournament over in Germany, who's also on Flow Slam. So that seems to be where his direction is going. It seems to be where a lot of people's direction is going. So there might be some steam to this Flow Slam thing continuing to be a bigger deal than maybe we ever gave it credit for. Yeah, I mean, I think Dijak's also kind of just waiting around to see if WWE is going to give him an offer, uh, which, I mean, we talked about you have to be two months out of your deal with Ring of Honor before they'll even talk to you. 
So, uh, I feel like, I think he's kind of like Kyle O'Reilly, even though O'Reilly's kind of just gone quiet completely, but uh, Dijak just, he's hanging around the the people that are, you know, WWE likes, and he's taking bookings where he can, and seeing what happens after that, you know. Yeah, I just hope, you know, good things for Donovan Dijak. I've really enjoyed him. And, you know, uh, we do know he'll be, you know, heading up and having a big match with Marty Scroll. But, I mean, uh, it, it at least, you know, we'll get a chance to see that and maybe be his last thing for Ring of Honor. And that'll be fine with me. It's just kind of sad because I love seeing Dijak. And I think he's got, you know, a lot of talent to offer. So, uh, Let's move on over, though, and let's talk about someone else who, you know, could be possibly leaving a promotion. And that's Paige now. It's been rumored, you know, leaving WWE, you know, in the near future, whenever, you know, they decide that they can allow that to happen, release her. Uh, but she's got some things in the works right now. looks like she's been training with uh, Albert El-, El Patron with doing some MMA. And thought processes out there have kind of said that she would like to enter the sport of MMA. So that could be something interesting. Uh, we've also heard that she could be starring uh, or will be starring in a movie about her or loosely based on her family and, uh, and her life and wrestling. And that is, of course, called Wrestling With My Family. And that's the title of the movie. So, you know, she's got some things going on here. Um, you know, there's some rumored things as well. Sean, I mean, with this whole Paige saga, how do you feel that this is all going to wind about and work out for her? Uh, you know, this is hard because you'd imagine WWE's producing that movie, so they're not going to let her go, I think, until at least that movie's out. Then after that, you know, and she's also recovering from the, the the neck surgery thing. So, would she be even ready to go by then? I think, to, I mean, it's just, that's uh, one of these things where we got to figure out what this all is with WWE. If they really have ill will towards her, is she ready to leave WWE because she knows that, you know, her soon-to-be husband won't be being there, and she's going to have to be away from him, and that seems to be an issue with her as well. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like it seems like she's more out the door than back in the WWE ring, if you get what I'm saying. I, You know, it's this thing with the movie seems, I don't know, just seems kind of weird to be doing when you don't really have her in your favor at the moment. Uh, and it might just be them trying to coax her back to them because obviously there's a lot of worry about the influence that Alberto has had on her and all this other stuff. And it's see, you know, she's being pulled in a lot of different directions and I, I hope she stays. It's best. I think it's best for her career, obviously, and her being away for so long. Now she's going to feel really fresh if they ever do decide to bring her back on camera and everything. But I, I mean, it, it's, it really does seem like she's almost out the door at this point, which is a, a big shame. But if she finds other ways to make money and is happy with it, then, then props to her. Yeah, and, you know, being in a movie is never a bad idea. And if it can be, you know, halfway successful, that could lead to other things for her. You know, so that's a good thing. And, you know, I don't know. The MMA thing take it or leave it i mean it, it could happen but I, I think that you know wrestlers going in mma it's difficult and i think vice versa mma people coming into wrestling it's always a difficult transition because you train completely different you have different goals and it's just you know it's a world that you know is involving athletics which you're doing every day but it's just a different way and so ah, man seeing that transition for her it's kind of sketchy for me. And this movie sounds interesting. I kind of worry about the movie too, though. Especially if she's, you know, having this as her last thing really with WB. If they can continue on and have a relationship, that's great. But I don't know. I still see her walking out that door quicker than anything. I'm sure Albert El Patron is not sitting there, you know, hey, yeah, stay in WB. I'm sure he's kind of helping her out the door. Kind of like, you know, the CM Punk and... AJ Lee thing, I think, kind of, you know, kind of that same feel. 
So. I mean, it is interesting who they got to play mom and dad, though. I mean, it just you got some big actors, you know, uh, Lena Headey from Game of Thrones, and you got Nick Frost from the, uh, sh- you know, Shaun of the Dead, all those kinds of movies. So, I mean, the, the Rock is uh, playing his role well and uh, using his Hollywood connections to get some people. It's part. I mean, obviously Halle Berry, as far as uh, awards and bigger name, is the the biggest thing that he's ever had in one of their films. But that was, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's a film that they just bought the rights to. She was already going to be in it and everything. As far as from the ground up, this is like the most, the you know, big as far as popularity and and all that uh, that they've had from the ground up in one of their movies so mm-hmm. you know kudos to WWE you gotta hope this does well yeah for sure and you know I, for their sake I, I hope it does well and of course if especially if I watch it I hope it does well because I, I want to see a good movie so we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, sticking with WWE though let's talk about the fact that Austin Aries has been cleared to wrestle of course we saw him have that orbital fracture um and it is a big deal of course because that was a match that you know him and shinsuke nakamura had which he got him injured but now he's finally going to be coming back and there's been some rumors and thought processes out there that he could be possibly facing neville for the cruiserweight title at wrestlemania this year how do you feel about this paul do you like that matchup does, does it feel good or do you kind of think that they need to go in a different direction I think what they're trying to do here is build off of name success to try to get people to watch this cruiserweight division. And, and we've talked about possible names that could come up in NXT to fill that role that they seem to do, or, or that WWE wants to bring up, and that's today Otami and some other guys like that. I, I'm okay with this. Um, I think it, they could work a great match, obviously, but I you have to wonder which way the spectrum they're going to go here and... I mean, the build could be awfully convoluted with Aries playing a very large heel on commentary the entire time he's been on screen on main WWE television. So, just have to wait and see, I guess. But I, I'm for the match. Yeah, this is weird because Austin Aries has proven time and time again that he is a much better heel than he is a face, and you've just done everything you could to get people behind this heel Neville who's also being a major dick. I mean, were well, you going to have two jerks in a match and hope people... Uh, this just totally seems like, hey, we know what, we, what kind of crowd we're going to get at WrestleMania. They're not going to care. It's probably going to get... They're probably going to get dual chance anyway. Just let's uh, do what Paul said. Let's just get the two biggest names we got in 205 Live and have them go at it. Yeah, and you know what? Honestly, it's not a bad idea because you're wanting people to watch this WrestleMania. You're wanting it to be a big deal. And, I mean, of the Cruiserweights, those are kind of the two top guys, right? And that's important. And I think for you to get, you know, a a good audience behind this, you're going to have to have the best of the best match up against each other. So uh, I really feel like it, you know, at this point, that's what you got. And I think there's other great names you could throw up there, but for this point, I think it's smart. So the I hope it happens. I could, I could think mm-hmm. is that maybe they think that since Aries has been injured that he'll get the face pop because he's coming back from injury or something like that. But it's you'd also have to be expecting that people just don't watch the show at all, which there is a case for that. And never hear him on commentary, but you'd also have to never hear him on commentary on Raw either. It's just, mm-hmm. it's so weird. Yeah, it is. You know, WrestleMania is a big, you know, point for WWE. It's major, of course, for, you know, big live event, you know, the biggest of the year, all these great things. That's why they have those big matchups. And, you know, uh, they want to grow their network, which, you know, hosts that big WrestleMania event. And, you know, last year at this time, uh, they had a pretty good subscriber number, but now they've kind of increased that count, and now they reportedly have 1.41 million subscribers. 
so that's a you know eleven percent increase for them, and you know that's positive, and that's kind of what they want to see here. And this is a big thing, you know. Like I said, WrestleMania is a big way for them to sell to the network. How do you, uh, what do you think about that? Do you think that's, you know, kind of proves that the network is working or what, what do you, how do you feel about it, Sean? I mean, obviously the network is working. Um, it's working in, in certain places. Obviously there's other places where people aren't going to buy the network. It's just not a thing for them. But I, I think obviously everybody's starting to, starting to get into the understanding that, this is the way everything's going, right? Everything's going uh, a la carte. Everything's going into digital. DirecTV is about to start their own, uh, basically to compete with uh, Sling TV and PlayStation View. Uh, we're getting more and more channels that are going. There's They have their own on-demand version. Uh, so it just... WWE is ahead of the curve with this. And I think... Uh, it's it's it was never I think the people that thought immediately and even WWE had to come to the understanding that as much as they want to compare themselves to Netflix, they aren't Netflix. And they're a niche product. And they're gonna it's a long term it's a lot of money for a long term thing. And and perhaps in you know, next year and the year after that the, the, perhaps the subscribers can keep growing. You don't know. There might be a cap on this thing because, again, we're talking about WWE. We're not talking about WWE now has all your hit shows on the WWE Network or whatever. We're talking about just WWE programming and, and whatever other wrestling programming they bring in and their own original stuff and whatever, which has been very... They really haven't gone outside the box with this original stuff. I mean, it's been very what you kind of would expect. I mean, it's been some of it's been good, but I'm not going to say it's you know revolutionary or whatever. Um, but yeah, I just look the the net, good thing that the network has grown year over year. This is what you want to see because you don't want this thing to go away. I really don't want to go back to paying more than ten dollars a month for a pay per view or two pay per views or whatever. And Vince says that the brand split's working, so, you know, we'll see how that goes for next year. I think the really cool and impressive thing about this number right here is the network is almost two years old. It'll be two years old at the end of February. And if you look at television numbers of what they get every week, somewhere in the threes or the twos in SmackDown's case, you're almost getting half of your core audience onto the network. I think that says something really big about how well they've done with this, at least as far as advertising and getting it out there to the people that they know are going to get it. Obviously, they wanted to hit a million a long time ago, so that way they break even. Now they are making money on this. I, I mean, it, I think this is great. This is all great for the WWE. Are you really, though? Because that counts international people, too. I don't know if those numbers are counting international, but if you just base it on the numbers that you get to see week over week, I think this is you're getting a good portion of your audience onto this thing, which is great. I mean, it's totally great. Yeah, I mean, and we don't know how many of that, how much of that audience also is. They live in a place where the internet's still not good enough to have something like that, mm -hmm. or internet's just too expensive. So, and that's becoming a thing now with. You know, Comcast has a data cap on me. I had to pay fifty dollars for the unlimited every month. For all of you, you know, for both of you guys and for everybody else around the country, that's going to start happening. All these cable companies are going to start having data caps, like what you get with your cell phone. And so people are going to have to start making that decision. Of, okay, well, you guys want a streaming service as well. Guess what? You get to pay extra. To be able to watch all the streaming services you want, or to be able to download all the crap you want, so you got to start making that decision: what's important to you, and you know, we are going to eventually hit a bubble where we're, we might have too many streaming services, not just wrestling, but period, and people might have to start choosing which ones they want, you know, and and does WWE fall into that category of it's not that important, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Exactly, and that that does become a big issue, especially when you're having people say, well, you know, I'm the only one in my household who watches wrestling, and the kids want, you know, Disney, and then my wife wants this, you know, three or four channels, and I want these other six channels, you know, so, and, and these are all apps. I've got to download all these apps or download all of these onto my account. That way I can have all these channels and I've got to make some eliminations here. So my bill's not as expensive as it used to be. So I can pay that stinking data package. There's going to be some losses there. And that's a big fear. You know, WB could be on the chopping block for some people. I don't know if that's the case, but it could be. So that, that's, you know, something they have to look at as well. So, uh, well, to wrap the quick hits up, I, I want to mention a few things really quickly. Uh, Eric Rowan is training to get back. Well, I, I did want to ask that question before we uh, Go ahead. talk about Eric Rowan here. Do you guys feel like, I know it's been what, uh, when did they start this thing, in June? Or The network? Know, whenever, the, no, the uh, Vince says that the Brian extension has worked just like he thought it would. And it has helped them bring in the revenue and all this other, you know, increase that. He feels the brand split has helped increase that number and helped increase things WWE-wise and all that. Do you think that it has worked in this, what is it, six months that we've had this or a little bit more? I'm trying to find a date on the network or the brand split again. Uh, You know, just for my, you know... I don't even exactly know when to start, but from my point of view, I, I actually have kind of enjoyed the brand split, and it's because you do have some variations between both brands, and you know, you actually have a reason more to watch SmackDown, where SmackDown was always the raw rebound, you know, and that was just kind of monotonous, boring, and heck, honestly, I half the time didn't watch SmackDown. Now I've got a reason to. There's a lot of superstars I want to watch on there. And, you know, uh, you do have an opportunity to see both brands in a different way and different pay-per-views aren't all the same. Same guys uh, are not always on the same thing. So I appreciate that. That's what I like about it. Uh, So the, the brand split started on May 25th is when they first announced it. Uh. So not not quite the a year. The draft yet. I think was like June nineteenth or something like that. I don't remember. Um, I think it's worked to varying degrees. I think you shot yourself in the foot when it comes to a lot of things you were trying to jumpstart, like a women's division and revitalizing that or some other areas. But I think if you look at what it's done for SmackDown, it certainly worked there. I think a lot of main event talents have gotten a chance to succeed in areas that they might not have had a chance in in a single show. Which is the benefit of what you get with a brand split like this. But, I, I mean, you look at both shows and areas are still suffering the same as they were. You still don't have that same writing that people were hoping for. Uh, you still don't have a, a great tag team division on either show as tag teams continue to play WWE. I, I Mid-cards continue to not do great either. Um, so I certain elements I would call a success... I don't think I would completely call the relaunch of it a success. Because I feel like we're back to the same problems we had when we had the original brand split, right? A lot of your mid-card talent has time to go out there and do something, but you don't do anything with them. So you got to build those guys and all these other things that they're just they're still not doing. I, I do think that you... SmackDown has been the biggest benefit of all this, is that SmackDown feels important. It... You know, it's uh, AJ has been AJ Styles has been absolutely just carrying that brand and being awesome. You've seen a John Cena be kind of revitalized as well, even in a diminished role. You know, this whole story—that's the thing that SmackDown's been able to do. They've been able to tell their stories better. Not everybody has a story, or not everybody's story is. You know, they have had you know like Apollo Cruz was there, and then then disappeared and now he's back again or whatever but for the most part smackdown every time you watch it everything that's on it matters they don't really have a lot of filler they figured out how to work with that two hours and make it all mean something you know raw still has that problem of okay they have the extra hour we got to put matches out here that don't mean anything 
but they have been able to use that to their advantage of, okay, well, we have a show that focuses on, you know, a guy like Goldberg, and it shoots to the moon as far as, you know, their revenue and their everything else. I mean, so that was a plus for them. Like Paul mentioned, the main event scene and, I think there's always going to be minuses, right? They're not going to be able to focus on everything. And that mm-hmm. the tag teams has, always, has been a thing that's been suffering for a long time. I don't think that the brand split was going to help it at all. I think the women are going to come through slowly. It's just, it's the women is more about establishing who they are and getting the fans to really care about those characters. And they're just not doing a great job. At least SmackDown's doing a fine job. Raw's just not doing the greatest job of, you know, establishing too many of them. You have four or three, and then the rest of them are kind of just whatever. So you really need, a, you really just need to have more women, I think, there to kind of beef out both of the rosters, really. But I, I think the, the, the women are going to come through eventually. I just feel like... They have so much they got to focus on with those shows. They got so much going on that there's going to be divisions or people that are just going to be left to the wayside, just like it would be if they're all together. Just you have a little bit more wiggle room because you're you're all on one show instead of oh we're trying to pack in. How do we get all of these guys and girls on the show instead of just half of them? Yeah, I agree. You know, it's it, it's it's interesting the way this all kind of worked out, and I think that there will be some growth. Of course, I mean, this has not been that long of a time period, really. Uh, so, I mean, hopefully, they will build upon the brand split and do better with it. And you know, I, I think some of it's been great, and of course, like you guys pointed out, there's also been some of those things that have kind of made it, you know, not so good. So, uh, but we'll continue to follow that for sure. Uh, I know we're kind of going long on quick hits here, so I'm going to throw out three things, and we're going to just kind of quickly kind of let you guys talk about each one. Uh, Eric Rowan is actually getting ready to come back. He's doing some training, getting ready to come back. But, you know, we have Eva Marie, someone we've seen a part of WWE and, of course, NXT, maybe rumored to be leaving and not coming back to WWE. And then we have someone in Nikki Bella, who's been rumored to retire after this year's WrestleMania, but then some sources say that's a complete lie. So kind of give me your ideas about all these, Paul. Uh, Eric Rowan coming back is great. I feel like him and, and Harper could at least be a cool tag team that you could use to invigorate SmackDown some more. Uh, if Nikki Bella leaves, I, I mean, I guess that's okay. If she stays, that's fine, too. I, if she does stay, she's going to be women's champion over on SmackDown before the end of the year, I guarantee you that. Uh, it's hard to call even Maria a loss, but she was building into something of a heat magnet over on SmackDown before the, the pop for the wellness violation. So maybe a creative disappointment, but as far as a wrestler goes leaving, I, I can't say I'm too sad about it. Yeah, I, this the thing with Eve Marie is so weird, right? Like, they had this whole platform for her to be a big star. She was getting so much attention and heat from the fans and if anything she could have been a great valet for people i mean i know they don't really use those anymore but i mean they could have they could have found a role for her if they really wanted to i really wonder if this is just she was there on her suspension and she started i think she's been doing a movie and other things and she might feel like I'm never really going to be a good wrestler. Why not just do the Hollywood scene or uh, do the gym thing with my husband or whatever, you know, like uh, we've seen Caitlyn, uh, she went to go do after she left A to B. So she has options for herself. I mean, it's not like she's not going to be able to find work outside of WWE or, you know, hell. Uh, you know TNA is waiting to pick her up. <laughs> so. Oh, boy. I mean, your next knockout champion, Eve Marie. Can't wait to hear that. I just, I mean, it wouldn't really mean anything. It's not like that knockout division is just on, you know, it's more like on the rails instead of, you know, 
cooking or anything, so it wouldn't surprise me, uh-huh. really. But, I mean, uh, and, and Nikki, uh, she's been improving so much. I'd hate to see her leave, but I really don't want to see her to the point with her neck where she can't have a good life. You know, if it's really getting to that point where it's getting into dangerous territory, like with Edge, or or other guy, you know, other guys that have had it, or even I think Beth Phoenix had to have the surgery, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, you don't you don't want to get to a point where maybe you're not going to have kids with John Cena, but you want to be able to have a life with John Cena, outside of wrestling, and that's uh, not going to happen for you if if you can't uh, walk or just can't function very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some very good points there. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, echo what you guys were saying, and you know, I think you know Nikki Bella, you know, staying or going. I think either way, they're going to do what's right for her. Uh, Eve Marie, I mean, if she joins TNA, uh, I'm just imagining her and Brandy Rhodes in a singles competition. <laughs> oh um, boy. <laughs> Boy, I, I just think to myself, Woo! who's going to get injured first or Botchamania has a whole match to show. Um, but yeah, anyway. Well, I mean, uh, they have but, some stiff competition with that Shelly Martinez and Rebel match. So. Oof. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's Quick Hits. We've had some really great topics to talk about in Quick Hits this week, but we are going to move on from this and getting to another preview. We're going to be talking... New beginnings uh, in Osaka 2017. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll be right back with that right after this. King of Spot. New Japan Pro Wrestling. All right, well, uh, New Beginning in Osaka, the second of the New Beginning shows, the much more packed New Beginning show, and then after this you would be heading into March where you get the New Japan Cup, the anniversary show, uh, all that kinds of fun stuff. But before that, On a rising. Have, yep, on a rising as well. Uh, much more a ROH show than a New Japan show, but... They always had some interesting stuff happening. Like last year, you know, they had the issue win the TV title. So I'm sure that there'll be something crazy happen this time as well. Or you can hope anyway. So this card, the undercard anyway, uh, has really had to been switched around because you had three different injuries. You had uh, David Finley has been hurt. You had El Desperado get hurt on the... Uh, two se- the February 7th uh, Road 2 show, which you can watch in New Japan World if you uh, care to do so. And I don't know, I, I think uh, Lance Archer has had this kind of back problem that's been bothering him, and they decided to have him sit out uh, for this one. So there's been some replacements, and, and they had to change matches around. So there was a tag match here that got switched into a singles match with Hirai Kawato and Taka Michinoku. Now we haven't seen Taka in a singles match in a long while. I, I it beats a lot of the other options you have when you look at Suzuki Gun Junior roster, though. So I'll take it. I think I Kawado is coming along pretty well. Taka is a vet. I'm sure this will be just fine. But you know, Taka is getting a win here. Yeah, you know, Taka's winning. You know, Taka works with the. You know, young ones in his dojo as well, so this should be a, a good match for for him and uh, for Kawada as well. Hopefully, it's something entertaining at least. After yeah, don't this, see why it wouldn't be. I mean, after this, you have the uh, getting your New Japan Six Man Tag in here. You get uh, Ten Koji of uh, Satoshi Kojima and Hiroshi Tenzan and Hinare. Against uh, another young lion, Tomiyoki Oka, Kushida, and Yoshitatsu. God, one of these things is not like the other. Uh, <laughs> uh, the left side of that match is, is rather packed with Tenkoji and Hinari, who has gotten, I think, the lion's share, uh, no pun intended there, of a lot of the work for the young lions. Uh, Oka is just starting to come along, Kushida and, and Yoshitatsu. 
I mean, Kushida's the, the junior heavyweight AS. Obviously, Yoshitatsu hasn't really been much of nothing, and I think that leads to Tenkoji getting a win. he's world-renowned, Paul. He is world-renowned. That is true. That is true. <laughs> uh, Tenkoji, one of those guys will pin the young lion, probably. but Or Yoshitatsu. We don't know. Yeah, really. Might no. be that same level. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, they always go with the elder statesman teams on, on this kind of situation. So, Oka will probably get pinned by, by Kojima, I'd say. And that will be your tag match. Hopefully, it's something interesting. Yoshitas has been sort of motivated lately in the undercards, knowing that he's going to CMLL lately, or pretty soon. Um, so, you know, you, you hope it's it's not just your drab two-star special or whatever. So, uh, moving on from here, you got an eight-man tag. Uh, the New Japan Junior Dads, as uh, Paul affectionately calls them, the Tiger Mask 4, Jushin Thunder Liger, Juice Robinson, and Yuji Nagata taking on a Chaos uh, B-team here. Jado, Ghetto, Yoshihashi, and Hiroki Goto, the never openweight champion. This seems... Well, you got Ghetto and Jado on one team. Two guys that just lose. <laughs> uh, even though, you know, you, I guess you could pin Juice on the other side. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to say the, the New Japan team takes out the, the Chaos team here. Uh, yeah, I, I have... Um, yeah, I have the... Juice, Liger, Tiger Mask, Nagata contingent of winning it here, too. Um, mostly because of an interview that Nagata did recently where he continues to want to prove that he's not, and he doesn't want New Japan to do what the West does, and that's just sort of trot out legends here and there and let them go out and do their thing and never do anything with them. So I, I think he taps Goto here, and you get an Ever title program out of that. That would certainly be interesting. You know, it's the way Goto had to defend this the title in the first place with uh, Ro- Juice Robinson beating him in a multi-man tag. So why not keep that trend going with Nagata beating him here? That would be interesting. Moving on to one of the ma- you know the other the only match that doesn't involve a title that got some uh, pub to it uh, had a picture before all this mess with the changing around a the junior heavyweight. Tag team champion or the junior tag team champions, uh, Veretta and Rocky Romero and Mr. Kazuchiko Okada, your IWGP heavyweight champion, against Taichi Yoshinobu Kanemaru, who gets uh, Taichi's replacing Desperado here uh, because it was Kanemaru and Desperado that were going to challenge Veretta and Romero next, but Desperado hurt his leg. And you get Minoru Suzuki here as well to kind of finish out the Okada and Suzuki arc for now. Or you at least should think so. Uh, I would think that uh, one of the tag guys would pin Romero Beretta to officially get a title challenge. I I went the same way. Um... Suzuki Gun defeating the Chaos Contingent here, mostly just because I don't, as much and as tough as Suzuki Gun looked uh, at the Sapporo show, they didn't really get any big wins. So them getting one here with uh, with Okada on the other end might do something for them and move them along that way. Whether it's Suzuki tapping him again or the juniors getting a pin over Rocky or Beretta or however that's going to go, it'll be one of those two things. Yeah. Um it's yeah, it is, and it's also the only other than Taka being in that you know young line match or whatever. It's really the only match that really involves Suzuki Gun at all after all the injuries and everything. So, I mean the tag match, but you know they're not mm-hmm. winning that tag match now, the tag title match. So right, I, you, it would make a lot of sense for Suzuki Gun to get the win back to have him look strong after all the losses. On the previous show. Then you get in your title matches here. Never open weight six man tag titles. Ryusuke Teguchi and Manabu Nakadishi and Hiroshi, Ten- Hiroshi Tanahashi. 
with his terrible music, uh, taking on the former champions, the Los Ingobernables de Japón, Bushi, Evil, and Sonata. I feel like this is made for Bushi, Evil, and Sonata to get the titles back. Yeah, I uh, I picked LIJ to get the belts back here, too. Uh, hopefully, they get to keep it for a little while. I'd love to have one of these teams at least have a, a, a longer reign than, like, two months. Uh <laughs> That, uh, that might just be a pipe dream at this point because these belts just seem built to, to get bounced around. But LIJ for sure taking the win here. Yeah, LIJ for sure taking the win. You hope it's a good match. I mean, these guys are going to be entertaining, so you mm-hmm. know that. And then they'll have the usual tricks with uh, LIJs. Should uh, provide a a fun fun little diversion here, I think, either before or after the intermission. Uh, Taguchi even on the Road 2 show, I think, cut a promo uh, doing the whole Naito stick that he does after he wins a match or whatever when he closes the show. And mm-hmm. he did it in his cadence and everything. So, uh, Taguchi's great when uh, doing these uh, comedy things. So we'll see if uh, anybody gets him back for that. But moving on. From there, you get your British heavyweight uh, title match, the uh, the Red Pro British heavyweight title, uh, I should say. Uh, Katsuri Shibata taking on Will Ospreay. That should be an uh, interesting one because Shibata makes regular, you know, he makes some pretty regular appearances there, and of course Will Ospreay does as well. I'm uh I'm really looking forward to this match. They've done a great job building this up every time these two have gotten in the ring, mostly by letting Osprey drop kick the living bejesus out of Shibata and watching him fly across the ring, which is just endless enjoyment. I uh I picked Shibata to retain. I don't think Rev Pro is gonna want to give away one of the bigger moments they can have. Osprey's been big shit for him, and I don't think they're gonna want to have him win the championship away from a Rev Pro. So I have Shibata to retain here and a possible rematch in Rev Pro down the line. Yeah, you make a lot of sense with that. If you're going to have the title change, have it on your show, not on their show. And I just hope that they get a really good match out of this. So, you know, that kind of matters. Or showcase that title and make people want to, maybe uh, you get to people that want to go watch some Rev Pro, subscribe to that streaming service and, and watch their shows out of this. So... Mm-hmm. Then you get your rematch, or well, it would have been a rematch if uh, Lance Archer had been healthy. Uh, Tomohiro Ishii and Yano defending the IWGP Tag Team Titles against Tomoaki Honma and Togi Makabe, and you get uh, Mr. Izuka and Davy Boy Smith. That must mean that Ishii and Yano are going to retain. But I would say that uh, Mr. Makabe has a 20th anniversary show coming up later this month. Could they possibly give the titles back to Makabe and Hanma to have them main event the show as tag champions, or would they just have Makabe in the the main event in a single? I would think they would want to do Makabe main event in a single match, although I think he's had way more success as a tag team wrestler, if uh, memory serves me correctly. Either way, I would lean towards... With an injury happening, I would lean towards New Japan wanting to keep things the same. So I'd say keep them in chaos and save them for whenever you have um, your Killer Elite squad back to full health. Then you can move the belts on them then, or or not, depending on how well you, you, you take to Ishii and Yano being your champs. But I, I'm saying that New Japan pays it safe and chaos retains. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Uh, Ishii and Yano retaining, get them to the team that you want them to be on when Archer's healthy, and you go from there. Uh, let Honda and Makabe go to the end of the line, or whatever they're going to do, they're going to separate and go back to singles. I selfishly want the tag title reign to end because you want Ishii back doing those great singles matches or whatever, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that, obviously. And after this match, you get your two big uh, matches that I think a lot of people have been waiting on here. Hiromu Takahashi and his first title defense taking on his old nemesis, Dragon Lee, for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. 
man, this should be tremendous. Uh, it's going to be great. I think Hiromu is retaining here. Yeah, I mean, we've seen this match so many times right across you know, Fantastic Mania. If you follow CMLL, you got to see them hooked up there a couple times. You even got to see the Ring of Honor. There hasn't been a time where this match hasn't been at least three and a half stars or better, and I'm sure they're going to want to bring it here for the big stage that the that they're going to be on. Takahashi retain, but boy, is Dragon League going to give him a run for his money. Yeah, you know it. Uh, and, I mean, usually the... These guys, just when they had that match at Fantastica Mania, it was oh, so great. If they can get anything close to that, uh, we're going to be singing the praises of this match uh, when it's over. And then, hopefully, uh, not to be outdone, you would think that these two would want to go out there and, and try to outdo them. Tetsuya Naito defending the IWGP Intercontinental title against Michael Elgin. Uh, I think Naito retains here. I pick Naito to retain too. I wouldn't be surprised if Elgin wins, but I think you keep that belt on the hot hand you got right now, Naito. And I honestly don't think that IC title is going to be going anywhere on him for a, a long, long time. Yeah, uh, should be a fantastic show on Saturday, 3 a.m. Eastern. Uh, midnight Pacific, if you're over there, and then, of course, you know, in between for, for you, those in the central and, and mountain time zones. Or, of course, you can always watch later on demand on New Japan World. So, uh, awesome. about 850 or so a month, not bad to pick up and, and get, guys. For sure. So, go check that out. It's going to be a, a great show, and uh, we'll be talking about more about it uh, later on. Uh, but so uh, now let's move on, though. We've got some more great content to talk about really quickly. We are going to be uh, crowning a superstar of the week. So don't worry. We'll be doing that right after we do some impact wrestling. So let's do that now. TNA Impact Wrestling. Oh, I replaced this damn thing. It keeps doing it. But uh, all right, guys. Take it away with the Impact review. So, uh, Impact opens this week. Um, most, we'll, we'll talk about the Hardys later. But let's, let's, Death Count Council comes out. DCC, I don't even know if they're still calling them by Death Count Council anymore. But they uh, they come out. Storm says that they've had a mission. No one's going to get in their way. Bada, bada, bada. <laughs> Eli Drake and Tyrus show up. And they aren't really happy about how they got their butts handed to them last week. And... Uh, they have a couple of jokes here and there. Uh, this leads to your opening match, which is a tag team match between uh, Kingston and, uh, I believe, uh, Bram, if I remember correctly, taking on Tyrus and Eli here. Death Count Council go over about six minutes. It's very meh. Uh, nobody, I think nobody really cares about the Death Count Council concept anymore. And uh, I don't think anybody has... There's not a lot left in Eli Drake since they've sort of teased you with the face heel, face heel thing that he went through recently. The DCC went downhill fast. And what they are now is more open. What they are now is just basically James Storm and a couple lackeys. Mm -hmm. That's about it. That's all you need to know about those guys. And that's not all that entertaining. It's okay. Um, But yeah, that's why this is meh. But not only that, you got to think about the fact that you have, like Paul just mentioned, Tyrus and a guy like Eli Drake who can't talk, which is one of his stronger suits. He's not a bad wrestler, but you know we love to hear the crazy, silly things he says. With him not talking, doing any of that stuff sucks. So Tyrus, who we're supposed to get behind, he's supposed to be the baby face here. It's just, I don't know. It's just not enough. So yeah, very meh. Very just kind of like, oh, and this is not a great way. I, I Sometimes I say, man, they did a great job starting the show. This is a terrible way to start the show, to be honest with you. This is a great way to get people to change the channel. Well, uh, cool. Yeah. You know, anything involves James Storm, you already know how Paul feels about it. Yeah. It, I mean, <laughs> it's, the opening segment's fine. It's I, I really want this to succeed so much because I, I'm a huge Eddie Kingston fan, but they – they gave you really no reason to care about them out the gate whenever they sort of dilly-dallied around, didn't really let them establish themselves as a strong contingent. They've just sort of been there. 
And there's uh, no uh, easier way to kill a faction than by having it be led by James Storm. But uh, there's that too. There is that too. <laughs> well, it doesn't help though that you got Tyrus, you know, calling uh, Kingston mini me too. Like, oh, geez, uh, you know, wow. Uh, but you know, uh, we're saving the Hardy stuff. But I want to say this: that was a great way to actually begin. But that wasn't long enough to keep people after they saw this. Is what I, that's what I want to make the point. I don't mm-hmm. then I, I don't want people writing and saying, "Oh, Gary, you're wrong because they started the show out with something different." No, but that Hardy segment wasn't exactly 15 minutes. That was like one and a half at the most, maybe just a minute. So, yeah, yeah. Well, and like I said, we're, we're going to talk more about the Hardys later because they have a big announcement to make. But let's let's get some of this other riffraff out of the way. And uh, when I say riffraff. I'm, I'm talking about Aaron Rex, guys. He has a match with Robbie E. They're sort of they're following up on all the stuff that they've been building between these two guys. And uh, this match, I think it, it's fine. It's very flat, in my opinion. I don't think anybody's into the Aaron Rex gimmick that he's got going on. Same stuff, really, every week. Nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to care, Gary. Well, I, you know what? I don't really seem to care either. Uh, Robbie you know, is the reason to watch this damn feud, honestly. Eh, to, maybe to an extent. I've this was Robbie not a strong in, I've liked Bobby E in this. The problem is, <laughs> they're like, it's still that whole, well, I'm a bro, and this is not really cool, and, well, okay. Robbie E falls under the category I feel like Eli Drake does. His voice, uh, using it, helps his character, who he is. This did nothing to do with his voice. This is just a match. And just didn't work all that great. I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with Robbie E as a wrestler. I'm just saying this was not all that special. I, I think, you know, when Paul said flat, I think that's a good way to expl- explain it. It was goofy. It was silly. Everything that the Aaron Rex and, of course, you know, my little buddy out there um, is doing. It's just, I, oh, man, I just don't know. I want to like it. I, in fact, I kind of felt myself saying, you know what, Rockstar Spud, you're my little buddy and all. You're doing great. I just, I'm having a problem with the Aaron Rex thing. It's kind of growing on me, but kind of making me kind of think this is awful at the same time. It's not. It's just. Aaron Rex has been flat. He's been in TNA. And just, well, yeah. Now the he's really trying now, but uh, it just doesn't come off like he is. He should have talked to Jericho about reinventing himself. This reinventation is... Uh, it's not good. It's not good, whatever it is. It just it, it does It hasn't really attracted anybody to the character or anything like that yet. He's not engrossing you. He's just flamboyant man doing things and fighting people and that's not enough for a character that you're trying to portray like you are yeah um let, let, we'll, we'll, let's backtrack here a little bit so brandy gets a segment to come out and talk about how she wants to finally settle things with rosemary and the decay uh, she is very abstinent and not wanting to join them and is ready to solve things with Rosemary in the ring with the uh, the throwing hands option is what she called it. Uh, she actually says, you want to throw hands? I'm right here, baby girl. What's up? And Brandy, you, you can't do that. I'm sorry. Uh, the K come out and look like they're about to attack. Here comes Moose to make the save. And that's your segment. Let me say this. Brandy, <laughs> she's good at being what WB trained her to be, right? And that's an interviewer, a newscaster, a announcer, whatever you want to call her. She'd be a great journalist. I mean, she has that kind of voice. I mean, I could see her saying outside, it's raining outside, everyone. It looks great out here, you know, on I-45. But I think as an intimidation, terrible. As a person who's trying to get across some really strong emotion. Terrible. I, I, I'm sorry, Paul. Just I, I just didn't feel it. I mean, I get what she was trying to do. She did a great job of doing it as a newscaster. Outside of that, I didn't feel it. 
I can't say I really did either. Uh, you're right. I think she's been geared to do certain things. And obviously she is still brand new to all this. And I don't want to feel like we're being overly hard on her. But this was not very good at all. I think they're sort of trying to do something that runs adversely to who she is as a person. And I think starting out, that's really who you need to stick with is who somebody is as a person before you let them try character work. And she's she's a very nice person. And and I know people aren't always interested in watching nice people, but watching a real nice person walk into a horror show is something you want to see because it's funny or it's actually scary for them. And And they didn't really do that they just dump straight into decay once or for whatever reason for potential or, or whatever other sinister thing they might have in mind and they they've glossed over that and skipped to the part where i don't want to join you i'm not going to do this and now we're going to have a fight that's probably not going to draw any interest instead of building it up into like trying to invite her into some decay area and it's all crazy haunted and you get to watch her go through the haunted house i think that would have been fine but she they didn't do that yeah, exactly. You, you bring up some great points here. And you know something else that I think they need to think about? So, so hold on, is... Mike. Has Moose been having involvement with Decay at all? Nope. No. Okay, so TNA just pulled a WWE and said, oh, there's a black girl. we got to have the black guy come save her. Like, yeah, baby faces are also friends. We've already established that. I know this. Look, I mean, come on now. <laughs> Paul, like... I mean, you know, Cody Rose is a white guy married to a black girl. Like, do you really need to do the racial thing? Like, I mean, it's like, oh, we have nothing for Moose to do. Let me, let's go save Brandy. Uh, you know, it's fine. It's whatever. I'm just making a joke here. It's, no, it's, it's, or it's the WWE. It's a, it's a wrestling standard pretty much at this point. But mm-hmm. I, I just, <laughs> you want to you. throw your hands up I'm right here. You might as well have been like, bitch. I'll be coming for you right now. Like, you know, she yeah. might as well have just gone all ghetto and... <laughs> like, Stereotype, huh? Like, uh, well, you know... Uh, I'm just I'm just saying. Like, if you're gonna... No. Either go all hard on it one way or don't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I agree. You know what? In your way, is way better than what we got. Only because, like I said, there was no emotion. If she would have done that... And done it in more convincing. I, hey, I'm all on board. And th- what I was kind of about to say was, you know, I kind of feel like they should have never involved Cody Rhodes in this whole thing. Let the Smart fans understand that she's married to Cody. If you're going to involve Cody, do it later. Don't do it before. Because it's. It, let me tell you this. I feel like Cody Rhodes drove up to Impact, dropped her off. And said, okay, honey, have a good day, and drove off. And now That's she's what he at school. Did. And now she's at school getting bullied. And she has no way out of this. And he's not coming to protect her because he's at work and she's left there. And, and so I look at that as a weird situation. Now you're having, you know, a moose who, it's fine. Moose needs something to do. This is not terrible. I'm not making a big deal about that. But I'm, I'm with Paul in the fact that. I want Brandy to be scared. I love the fact that they did have the case around her. But, of course, you know, she knew she had backup coming, so there wasn't that much fear. But I want her to go through all those terrifying things to really feel like she's about to be murdered. And then she's saved. Then the day becomes of it's the day of reckoning, not, you know, hey, immediately I have help. Don't worry. So Right. Yeah, it's like walking into a haunted house with a sledgehammer. You just start breaking down the walls. It's just Exactly. No build up there at all, which uh, is unfortunate. But uh, let, let's cut to this other thing that I was a, a bit better, I guess. Um, the Helms Dynasty gets to come out now, saying as they have won the X Division title once again. They run down DJZ some, talk about how um, how Trevor Lee is sort of the crown jewel and everything like that, and he uh, Helms sort of says that. Everett is the weak link, and he gave, or, and that Helms had given Andrew Everett all the opportunities he could, and he wasted them. Everett says, "Yo, I mean, you're wrong, dude. Uh, I, I'm not the fat. I'm not the failure here. I'm, I'm part of this team. Lee is great, and I helped him sort of get there. And it would, you know, you haven't really been here. It's been me and Trevor. You're the weak link, and." Uh, 
as he goes to uh, sort of deal with Helms, Trevor Lee attacks him and split them up here. And I thought this was pretty good. And this is really, I, you've only ever seen them tag for the most part. You haven't really seen them go one-on-one. And I think they'll, uh, they'll absolutely kill it if they get the chance. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, a fine way of doing this. And this kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't see this coming. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's good. That's always a good thing. Uh, I, you know, do wonder how these guys are separate. I, I have not seen that. I know, Paul, you've probably seen him, you know, do plenty of things on the indie circuit and other promotions. So it's going to be an interesting new step for me to see these guys kind of do their own thing and work singles. Um, but, you know, it, it's cool, and it's a new feud to add in that doesn't feel like that it's rehashed. So I, I'm game for it, actually. Yeah, I, I'm completely okay with this, especially if we get some stronger characterization for these two for the X Division. I think you're going to have at least a nice base to build off of, if, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I think we've dilly dallied around this enough. It's time to talk about the Broken Hardies. So as Gary said, they did open the show... Uh, King Maxwell is eating something with carbs in it, and Matt questions, hey man, I mean, why are you eating carbs for? And Nero's like, hey man, Maxwell's undefeated. You don't need to question him. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> uh, they have another segment where they're talking about Matt's latest premonition, and that brings him out to the ring, where the deities have given him another pre- premonition about the expedition of gold. They have also upgraded Vanguard 1. So he can teleport them to all the promotions on Earth with tag team championships for them to win so that they can conquer all the titles and uh, continue to show off how powerful they are and how how great this this expedition of gold is going to be for them. And they're going to go everywhere. And right now he's had a premonition. They have to teleport away and they show up at Tijuana. <laughs> <sighs> oh, uh, all the voices. It's wonderful. I, I'm pretty sure that's all that we get from them for the rest of the evening. Yeah. Well, plus yeah. they uh, they get to go against the Tazi Champions in Mexico, right? Yep. Yeah. I I think I I know they've been booked in the Crash for a match. I don't know if it's for their titles. It's uh, Sea Coastus and Super Crazy. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, it, you know this whole thing as a whole, it was pretty good. Honestly, they they did a, you know really fun thing for all the fans. You know the whole teleporting thing, and you know the explanation of you know they're they're out for gold, and you know they're gonna go and, and you know of course you know fight the bucks of youth at the Ring of Honor or the Honor of Ring, whatever they call it. And then of course you know they always tease, of course, the evil man McMahon. They're going to go there and things like that. So it, it was just entertaining all the way through. Every segment that they had, it was, it was fun. So uh, they continue just to be a great part of TNA and just to keep you interested in what they're doing. And, of course, you even get a little, you know, Rebby kind of questioning what's going on. I, I like that, too. They throw that little piece in there of Rebby's unsure if this is a good idea, but they reassure. So it was good they stuff. they got to have a match with the... <clears throat> Them in the new day would just be amazing. Just too bad they can't do it, but it's just yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, file that, and they're never going to happen uh, unless that <laughs> well, is the last yeah. piece of them like doing this thing is that they go everywhere, and then you know they they finally sign or WWE offers the contracts and they sign, and away they go, and they just bring it over. I mean, that would be cool. I don't think WWE would do it, but I wonder if they would let them. Yeah. If they didn't sign, if they let them do it in NXT, since they do use un, you know, they do use a uh, unsigned talent on NXT. I feel like with guys with the history that the Hardys have with WWE, that they wouldn't want to use them on NXT. They just they'd bring them straight up. And I and I, I see what you're saying. It's just sort of a fun one-off thing. But I. I don't think they would do that. It just doesn't seem WWE of old maybe might have. I don't think in since you know they won the war essentially that they would do it. Oh yeah, I I'm just throwing it out there. I don't think they would either. I think they would definitely 
make the Hardys sign their deals. It's just, I'd hate it because I know Vince and he's going to say, well, look, I don't care how many delete chants you have going on in these arenas. It doesn't mean that three-fourths of that crowd even knows who the hell TNA was, let alone your character. Unless they let him tease it, you know, in vignettes beforehand, which would be great. I just, I don't know that I would see WWE letting him be the broken Matt Hardy going into WWE. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's I mean, not Vince's they... creation. Go ahead. No, I was just, just going to say, yeah, yeah, I agree with uh, Sean because of the fact that it's not Vince's creation, and we know how he is about that. It, he's got to put the Vince stamp on it, and then he'll let us succeed. I, I, I only imagine they would be sort of the same way that the Delis were. The glory run... And here's your your sort of being thrown up against the teams of today, and you're making them look good, and that's it. I think that's all they would get. Uh, let let go ahead. It's not just sad. Yeah. yeah let's uh, let's move on. Let's talk about this this whole alley deal they had running on throughout the evening. So, at the beginning or near the beginning of the show, Ali and Braxton Sutter run into each other. Maria uh, shows up. And yells at her to go get her coffee. And Allie sort of makes a joke about whether she means real coffee or coffee with whiskey in it. <laughs> and Maria then uh, looks at Braxton and then tells him, tells him that she still expects him to propose to Laurel. Uh, we move on to a later part in the evening where Mike Bennett sort of tries to, to give Braxton a pep talk and get him to do the right thing and, and play along with, with what they've been doing here. And Sutter does meet with Laura Leo later, drops something, kneels, and accidentally proposes to her, uh, who Laura is quick to accept and then runs away. So that's uh, that's whole, that whole thing going on there. Yeah. It's hilarious. Man. It really is to an extent. That's a terrible wedding you're going to have. She just wants to run away. She's going to leave you at the altar, too. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's kind of uh, it's going to be interesting the way they do the whole marriage thing, and and uh, I'm I'm kind if of you're Laura, looking forward to it. Honestly, bask in that glory of hey, I finally got him to propose to me thing. Like, but she's she's the pawn in this too, right? She's just doing yeah. this to keep Maria happy. So I mean, the the writing I think is pretty clear here. Whenever wedding day comes, Allie's going to show up and start kicking all kinds of ass, and then you're going to start really kicking this into over. The long con. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Oof. This is going to be hilarious just to see the way this all ends out. You know, but I, I, I have to say this. I mean, it wasn't boring. This was actually kind of fun. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they're doing a good job with it. It's it's not exactly the strongest thing in the world, but at least it's entertaining. I have to give that. So. I mean, it continues to be one of the best told stories that Impact does week to week, and that's that's not for nothing. They, they're really doing right by this, and that's something I can appreciate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I get you. Yeah, and, and, you know, it's always... Allie is super entertaining, so it, it's mm-hmm. always fun, fun to see what she can do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we get an Impact Grand Championship match with Drew Galloway defending against Shara. Uh, remember, Galloway is sort of lining up opponents that he knows he can beat or can have an easy time with, and... He pretty much does that, even though they give round one to Shara. He just completely dominates him in round two and uh, murders him with the Claymore and the Future Shock to retain. This might be the best match I've ever seen Shara have, by the way. It's, yeah. Well, look who's he, who he's in the yeah. ring with, you know. <laughs> Suddenly oh, not man. because of Mahalo and Shara. I, that was kind of the point I was trying to make without saying anything. <laughs> yeah, that's just for... Mahabala, sure, I can't get any love. We we just thought we were going to give me a little, and then it's like, nope, sorry. Uh, but Not yeah, I mean, hey, I know you do, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> you know what? This is fine, and I was prepared to completely hate this match as soon as I saw Mahabala Shura. I, I it worked out fine, and it's you. You all know I hate this title. I it I just I hate it. I hate the format, but. Here, Galloway wins. There you go. I just Galloway really definitely. surprised that they kept it after it was like a such a Billy Corgan thing. 
Mm-hmm. I think there there seem intent on trying to work it into something um, that they can use. It's just I continue. They don't have the roster, and maybe this is something that they could sort of get away with in the in the Noah deal. Now that I think about it, is that you can have some of these guys come over, start challenging Drew, or give it to one of them, and and see if they can continue to have the same success because. The rest of the Impact roster, I don't think will do very well with this title. But if it's something you use to bring in foreign talent and display them, this could be a good way to do it. That's yeah, true. Could you imagine them doing a match in Noah? <laughs> the Grand Championship. Yeah. They walk boy. in, they're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I mean, like, seriously, just, uh, I can't wait until, you know, Jeff Terry comes back and goes, you know what we need? We need to bring back the King of the Mountain title again. Because, uh, you know, I'm the creative force now. we got to have the King of the Mountain. Just, uh. That poor belt has been rebranded oh, no. so many times. My God. I agree with you. They don't need to rebrand it again. But, you know, I just wonder if uh, Jared's going to be able to hub himself with that thing. He always liked that. He He loved that match, so. It's very true. Yeah. Um, so well, let's let's talk about our main event angle here. Obviously, Lashley and Eddie Edwards are having the big rematch on this show. And if Eddie Edwards does not win, uh, he will not get another title shot at Lashley again. Uh, earlier in the evening, you have Eddie Edwards' wife, wife, excuse me, Alexis Nevea, who works a lot in the uh, the New York tri-state Northeast area. Uh, show up, Eddie Edwards, or Eddie Edwards, Davey Richards is there with his wife as well, Angelina Love, and they're all there to support him. You get a couple segments of them talking throughout the evening. And then we finally get to the match, and Lashley continues to be Lashley. Uh, Edwards gets in his few spots here and there. It's a perfectly fine match. Uh, Lashley does end up retaining. That is, however, due to uh, Richards pulling out the ref, uh, before Eddie Edwards gets the victory, and then we get a big brawl between those two, and then uh, Angelina Love and Alexis Nevea get in a big fight as well. Uh, that does end with Eddie Edwards getting back in the ring, eating a spear, and Lashley retains that way. But the whole point of this match was to pretty much move Eddie's feud over onto Davey, and that split there. And then uh, if Angelina Love is back in the picture, and I believe Nevea has signed a TNA as well, you have two knockouts now. Yeah, I mean, uh, Angelina Love was always solid uh, for them, um, even when she came back a four. Uh, never seen Alexis Nevaeh, so that's going to be cool to get to see what she brings. And they've been teasing this thing with Dave Richards and Eddie Edwards since Richards came back, so no surprise here. Uh, look, this was well done for what it was, and let's see what, you know, last is going to be doing after this, and... Hopefully, Eddie and Davey get to deliver some terrific matches. Yeah. And, you know, it, 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 I, I do like the fact that you, you finally got to this point because, you know, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting for it, and, and now we got it. And, and I didn't really expect the the wives to be a part of this whole thing, but that's a nice surprise. You know, Angelina Love was always fun to watch, but, uh, you know, it's still a little bit weird to see her and. and this way, I'm so used to seeing her in like tons of makeup, the way she used to do it. So at first, I didn't recognize her. Then I was like, "Oh yeah, there she is." Yeah. Um, but you know, I I look for this to be a really good feud, and I think it's going to be really exciting at the you know at the the pinnacle of it. So th- this is good. I, I didn't have any problems with it, and of course, you get Lashley retaining his title for this, and Eddie Edwards is out of chances. That's it. That's probably so. going to be the big driving force going forward as well as the split, and that's your impact. Yeah, so there you go, everybody. Uh, well, now we are going to move on, and we have to crown a superstar of the week before we get out of here. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll be right back with that next. Superstar of the week. All right. All right. Well, let's do it, guys. Let's go ahead and crown a superstar of this week. And, of course, with this week, we're going to go ahead and talk about 
some guys that you know we were really kind of thinking about and trying to figure out who we wanted to be uh, a part of that. So let's go ahead and give our one point going over to – oh, man, my list just disappeared. Oh, here we go. Sorry, guys. I almost lost it. Uh, so the first one is going to go to Repugny Vice. Yes, Repugny Vice retained their tag team champion, their junior heavyweight tag team championships uh, at the Sapporo Show against the Suzuki Gun contingent of Taichi and Takamichinuku. The match was good, uh, and you get the unexpected surprise, I think, of Repugny Vice retaining because I certainly thought that the problems were going to show up again and they would lose, but they did not. So congratulations to them. And we got two points heading over to Samoa Joe. Yeah, Samoa Joe arrived on Raw and then absolutely killed it for the rest of the night. He had a, the, you know, terrific promo. Then he had the match with Roman Reigns and, you know, everything in between. Just It was Joe Knight on Raw. We got three points heading over Goto's way. Goto retains the Never Open Way Championship against Juice Robinson. Also, all of that support show. A very solid match. Very, very good. Uh, Juice really got to come out of that looking awesome. And, and uh, Goto comes away barely scraping out the win, which is great in typical Goto fashion. And earns himself three points along with the championship retaining. Jack Gallagher, open your umbrella because you got four points raining down on you. <laughs> nice. Uh... <laughs> They, he uh, competed in the Fatal 5-Way elimination match on 205 Live, which was a terrific match. Probably, again, I said this before, but this might have been the best match on 205 Live that they've had so far. Uh, just great action. Definitely you should go check this out, honestly. And the guy that is uh, pretty familiar with the number 5, and he is going to get 5 points from us, Okada. Yeah, Okada had a spectacular, spectacular defense against Minoru Suzuki for the IWGP Championship. Uh, also, the Sapporo Show. Uh, pretty much surprised that he can walk, let alone still has a leg, as Suzuki just absolutely tore it up. But Okada managed to come back and retain and earn himself five points along the way and a, a commanding lead so far in the, the total point rankings. Yeah, wow. Okada so is it's gonna be, owning it. Oof. Yeah, 15, and the only person looking at him in the mirror is Lashley with six. So, <laughs> <laughs> And then a bunch of people at five. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's awesome, though. I mean, uh, you know, we've got a guy early, uh, you know, running away with it, of course. You know, it's just plenty of time before, uh, you know, the end of the year. So we never know who can pop up and start to give him some uh, a little bit of competition. So, uh, But, yeah, that is our Superstar of the Week. Congratulations to Okada. But now we are going to head out of this show. So to let you guys know, always remember, if you want to go find any of our content, hey, if you're listening on podcasts or on iTunes or Stitcher or any other uh, place, you need to make sure you go to the W2M network. That's right. Go subscribe to that network, and you will have all our great content and your device as soon as it is done. Also, W2Mnet.com. That's the place where you not only go find all those podcasts, but you go find all the written material for all your wrestling needs. And, of course, also, if you're a big video games fan, it's also another great place to go check out awesome reviews about video games. Um, but, yeah, guys, I mean, we are done for this uh, episode. Uh, Sean, any other news that you want to give the people before we get out of here? Uh, yeah, we on Sunday... Uh, we will be doing our Elimination Chamber review uh, after, uh, you know, the, you can also listen to the Wrestling Unwrap guys do their Elimination Chamber review. And we'll also have a New Japan New Beginning in Osaka uh, W10 review as well. So uh, the shows we talked about here, you'll hear them on you know, hear us talk about them on Sunday. And, yeah, just, you know. Uh, make sure you keep checking out the, the network as uh, there should be a video game show tomorrow or Friday night at some point. Uh, soccer uh, to the max will be on as well. We'll be doing our first uh, previews heading into MLS being uh, about three weeks away. Four, you know, anywhere from three to four weeks away from starting their season. And... Uh, 
yeah, I mean, all the other, you know, Running Wild podcast has their thing. Uh, all the other shows, I mean, the, uh, the SCU show, the three-hour extravaganza that Stephen Err does, uh, he debuted his new show this week. Uh, I, it, I thought he did pretty well for being a one-man show. So um, just be sure to check all that out. And, of course, check out the website for a uh, New Japan Roundtable, Elimination Chamber Roundtable, and, of course, all the game reviews and other things that are there for you as well. Awesome. So, everybody, go check those shows out. And, of course, you know, we will be back with our show next week. So, don't miss that for episode 234, part one and part two, and along with those review shows we do. So, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Until next time, if you're not living life to the max. Not living life at all. You know it. Please. Yeah. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.